Lesson 2. Construction of an FPV drone. For the drone to take off, it must consist of the following components. The frame is the base for assembling the FPV drone on which we place our electronic components. The motor propeller group is attached to it, consisting of motors and propellers. The motors are the heart of the drone. They convert electrical energy from the battery into mechanical energy, which spins the propellers, creating the thrust necessary for lifting and maneuvering the drone in the air. They are also responsible for the speed and direction of flight. Motors for FPV drones are usually brushless, meaning they have high efficiency and a long lifespan. The motors are connected to the ESC, Electronic Speed Controller, board, which controls the speed of our motors by supplying current to them, causing them to spin faster or slower. If more throttle is given, the ESC provides more current to the required motors and vice versa. A power wire feeds the ESC from the battery and transmits energy to our motors through the ESC. Motors operate at high currents, so a thick power wire is used from the battery to the ESC. At the input to the ESC, a capacitor is soldered together with the power cable according to its polarity. It smooths out voltage spikes and protects the electronics from current fluctuations that may occur during intense flight and unwanted noise between electronic components. The capacitor quickly turns on and off tens of thousands of times per second to control the motors, which can generate many electrical spikes and noise. The issue of noise in FPV is very important as it can change the behavior of the drone in the air. The flight controller, FC, is connected to the ESC. The flight controller is one of the most important components of an FPV drone. It is a printed circuit board equipped with sensors that recognize the movements of the drone and the user's commands. Using this information, the FC adjusts the speed of the motors to move the drone in the desired direction. It is responsible for stabilizing the drone, ensuring precise maneuvers in flight, and providing data to the pilot. All flight controllers have basic sensors such as a gyroscope and accelerometer, and some even include a barometer and compass for autonomous flights, such as an automatic return home system. It acts like a conductor in an orchestra in the form of an electronic hub that computes all peripheral devices connected to it and issues specific commands to them. It has its own software where all our drone settings are stored, which are made via USB cable and Type-C connector on the FC itself. There are cases when there is very little space in the drone for mounting the FC and ESC. For this, there is an integrated AIO all-in-one board, which has the FC on one side and the ESC on the other side. However, they are not as reliable as separate ESC and FC boards, as they use smaller field transistors and dissipate less heat due to space limitations. If either of the two components burns out, everything fails. The choice depends on your assembly requirements. If space and weight are priorities, you will likely want to choose AIO. Otherwise, it is usually better to use separate FC and ESC due to their reliability. AIO is mainly used in Sinuhoop or TinyWoop drones that do not have enough space for assembly. There is also another type of drone assembly where the ESC board is not four in one, but consists of four separate ESC boards for each motor, which are mounted on the arms of the frame. This is done by athletes or hardcore freestylers who constantly push their FPV drones to the limit. And to save costs, in case one ESC burns out, they only replace that one, not all four. Because a four in one ESC costs $75, while a separate one costs $10. Using separate ESCs also makes diagnostics and repairs easier, as you can replace just one ESC if it fails without worrying about the rest of the system. However, for them to work, an additional board called PDB, Power Distribution Board, is required, to which these four separate ESCs are connected. Without this board, it is not possible to connect four separate ESCs. It helps avoid clutter with wires and provides each component with the necessary amount of current. A power cable and capacitor are connected to the PDB just like for the 4-in-1 ESC, 
and then the PDB, along with the four separate ESCs, connects to the FC, which commands them on how fast to spin. There are FC options with built-in PDB where you can directly solder the separate four ESCs. The receiver, RX, is connected to the FC, the receiver that links us to the drone via the remote control. It receives signals from our remote control and transmits them to the FC, allowing us to control the drone. Most receivers currently do not take up much space in the drone and are quite lightweight. They are mainly mounted at the rear of the drone, where the antenna is also routed out. Sometimes the receiver is mounted at the front of the drone or on the arm. Some receivers have two radio communication channels to enhance signal reception, especially for larger drones that may obstruct the radio communication between the receiver and the remote control due to their size. The VTX video transmitter is connected to the FC, which sends real-time video images from the drone's onboard camera to our FPV goggles or monitor. The VTX consists of the following components. The VTX board itself, which contains a radio frequency transmitter that broadcasts the video signal from the onboard camera as a radio signal on selected frequencies and channels that we receive on our goggles. It also has the capability to adjust the transmission power of the video signal according to our needs based on the specifications of the VTX itself. It can get very hot, reaching up to 180 degrees Celsius, which can cause it to burn out if the drone is constantly powered on without a cooling fan, similar to those used on graphics cards. Over time, this can lead to poorer video transmission. It cools down during flight due to the airflow around it. The next component for the VTX operation is the onboard camera. This camera serves as our eyes in the air, allowing us to see everything happening in front of the drone as if we were flying ourselves. This camera has a lens, or in other words, an objective, which can be changed to adjust the image focus, focal length, and field of view. The last component is the antenna, which connects to the VTX board and is responsible for transmitting this video signal. It is installed at the rear of the FPV drone, just like the video transmitter, to avoid overheating the FC and ESC. The next electronic component that can be optionally installed on the drone and is also connected to the FC is GPS. It is needed for the automatic return of the drone home in case of loss of communication between the remote control and the drone, or for hovering the drone in one place. With its help, one can see the speed of the drone and, in case of loss, find it using the coordinates recorded on the goggles. It also shows the distance from the launch point. There is also another electronic component that often helps locate the drone by sound without GPS, a buzzer or beeper. This is a small plastic cylinder that is also soldered to the FC, and in case of loss of communication with the drone, it automatically activates a beeping scenario, allowing us to find the lost drone, provided that the battery has not disconnected after the drone's fall. However, there are already autonomous buzzers that operate from a separate miniature battery. Each manufacturer of FC or AIO provides a recommended wiring diagram for connecting the electronic components to each other. This is very convenient and visual, speeding up the assembly of your FPV drone.